right, so I've been away a few days and the last thing I did was glue in the reinforcing carbon fiber uh, frames inside the side panels. So uh, I used like a structural adhesive. Let's see how they are looking. Taking off the bits that were holding it. Jesus. They are bloody on there. This is the one which was a bit of a pain. Absolutely chucked the uh, glue in that. It's t it, see, it's tight up against this, but it stands off from about there upwards, both sides. The panel of this van must just be very slightly different to the other side. Literally nothing. That's why there's nothing. These are here. So just before I went to Holland in the coma, I felt like I was getting a vibration when I loaded up the front left wheel. The van is incredibly noisy. There's no soundproofing or much in interior wise at all. So it's, you can't hear wheel bearing drones, uh, but I, I could feel it through, this, through the van, a slight grumble as I heavily loaded up the left wheel. I checked it out and yeah, the wheel bearing was in a bad way. I knew I needed one, but it was a few days until I had to do the trip to Holland. So I just re-greased up both front wheel bearings um, and took it. It was definitely better, uh, but it certainly needs it. So let me show you the noise it's making now. Not sure if that's coming across on camera. That one much better, but definitely not right. So this van is pretty old, right? So originally, before you had the likes of ball joints, which allow you to do your up and down movement and your uh, steering movement in one smooth movement, you had the likes of kingpins. So the kingpin allows the wheel to pivot, to steer. And then these, which I've just forgotten the name of, just allow the wheel to go up and down. So one allows you to do that and the other allows you to turn. This van repeatedly get, got picked up on MOTs. Only advisories though for kingpin play on this side. Well, if you wiggle this wheel about, you can't feel it. That's because there's the weight of it is like hanging down on it and the spring is compressing. You need to, you need to, Bar it, basically. Now, no doubt you can't see bugger all. There is, there is a bush inside here, pin that goes through, there is play in between them. And also I've noticed this tire is wearing a bit on the inside. So I've got a new bush and uh, pin kit, so I'm gonna change that.
This is the offending item. A weird setup if you're used to newer cars like I'd say I pretty much am. So what you have is this threaded pin, two lots of threads on it, quite coarse and then fine thread there. Then internal to the bottom arm, it's got a coarse thread. Then this is the bush inside that too has a coarse thread. So what you do, ensure you've got like the correct clearance up against this, the manual tells you. Luckily the manual's downloadable from the comma forum. Then this threads through there, which then also threads through there. Grease nipple on the end. Then in the center of this, you can see an orifice there for grease. This is hollow inside, you pump grease in and it fills up in the thread, in the threaded bush. You wind this through until it butts up against the back. Then you have a lock nut on the front, then you have a lock nut on the back. And uh, that's how it works. And then, as you can imagine, as the suspension compresses and decompresses, this is the pivot point. So, you, as you can imagine, you get that action. So, I've slid that bush all the way in, so it's two and a half mil protruding. There, that's what the book says. Uh, there's two chunky O-rings. I probably should have ordered new ones of these, but I didn't. I haven't got anything big enough. They're just to go there to stop uh, dirt getting in. So they'll do the job. Now to fit it back together. Make sure you don't spread that. Make sure it does actually carry on through. Happy with that. This is how far inboard the commas wheels are. Doesn't make sense. Adjusted the shifter to give me a few more gears. Basically allows me to go into second now uh, and hold second. Start in second, hold second. Um, which is useful because if I try and do a burnout maybe, uh, it axle tramps at slow wheel speed. If you start off in second, it just uh, it doesn't axle tramp. I've got some bits sat down there to make uh, an anti tramp uh, bar, but my MIG weld is away at the minute, getting repaired. So and I need to weld it into the into the underneath of the van. It can't be done with the TIG welder, so that's got to wait. Uh, but by being able to start off in second gear, I can misbehave and not have tramp. Um, what else? So yeah, bearings are done. Uh, the fulcrum kingpin part, whatever that's called, and bush is changed. So take it for a drive. Oh, and also the carbon fibre bar parts on it. Maybe quieter. We'll see. Give it, a, give it a test drive. Come with me. <laughs>
took a little video there to wrap it up whilst I was driving, but it didn't record for some reason. Uh, the van drives nicer, noticeably smoother now the bearings have been done. Uh, like I say, the van is so noisy, you can't really uh, hear like wheel bearing drawn as you would in like a civilised car. So it was more of like a, like a vibration feeling. Uh, that's gone now. Gear selector wise, if I'd have been able to adjust it to be able to get all the gear smoothly, I'd have had a go fit in the manual valve body. There's too much slop in the selector. The selector, uh, particularly the dash side of it, needs remaking. And basically, I don't want to remake it because I don't want a manual valve body van. I want it to be a fast shifting auto. So let's see what happens. There's a Swedish day tomorrow, like a Swedish car show. Saabs, Volvos, all that. You know what Swedish cars are. And you also know the Comma isn't one of them. But uh, I'm going to take the Karma, and I'm going to take the 900 as well. Rowena's going to drive the 900. But for now, this will do. So thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon.